Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the live stream. My name is Matt Bailey. I'm the National Ambassador for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. I like to go live every single day I possibly can. We've been a bit uh, slack in the last week. We've been busy organizing things, putting things together, doing some great work uh, around with our events and our, um, our members and our releases. And so being able to go live every night last week was a bit tough, uh, but we're back again. It's Monday. Uh, and uh, I know a lot of you, uh, especially long-term listeners, and I, it's like one of those radio terms, isn't it? Long-term listeners will know this. Uh, long-term listeners of this, uh, or long-term viewers, I should say, uh, people just like James Finnegan, hello everyone, he says, um, will know that uh, Monday is usually reserved for Monday rant. Uh, this is not so much a rant. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Still riding a high from our Sydney uh, Whiskey Garden steps, which was just Saturday afternoon in the Royal Botanic Gardens. What a magnificent evening. So good to have so many members there and part of, of everything that was going on on that day. I just want to also make a special shout out, and I don't know if they're watching right now, but I do want to make a special shout out for all of our station hosts. Of course, Murray and uh, Murray Hassan, who we've had on the, on the stream a few times, Andy Davis, who... Many of you won't, won't know Andy, but he's invaluable to the society. Uh, Andrew Durbage, our cell master, of course, and, and New South Wales manager, I should say, and director and chairman and Mr. 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 Many Hats, as we know him. Um, of course, also uh, uh, Tony Chapman and Matt Wooler. And a huge shout out as well to, uh, uh, to Susie Tours. For those of you who don't know Susie, Susie is the oracle. She is the brains behind everything. She is the cogs that keeps everything going. Uh, and um, we couldn't do it without you, Susie, so thank you. And you know I appreciate you, of course, and uh, Susie and Danelle, who are tirelessly always putting th things together in the office and making sure that memberships run and um, everything sort of comes together, if you like. And uh, they get, get to put up with my chaos and my endless enthusiasm. So um, always appreciated. Now, tonight's theme is about, I, I, I labeled it like it's sort of, uh, what's the difference between a whiskey club versus an independent bottler? So uh, <laughs> no rant until you get triggered. If there's a comment or question that sets me off, of course that's going to happen. Um, but I also realized that over, you know, over the weekend, I missed a couple of drams because I was busy uh, hosting our event and doing everything like that. So I missed out on some of the drams from our advent calendar. I'm going to feature a couple now. So Maybe one, maybe two. I'll see how I go. Let's have a look what the next, the last three days have been that I've missed out on. So 12th, 13th, and today's the 14th. So that's three whiskeys to go through uh, in the pack. I've just pulled them out. We've got a 4.256. We haven't seen a four in a while. A dark palette palette. A 15-year-old first fill XPX hogshead. A sherried Orkney whiskey right there. I've also pulled out 41.134. Gee, that's a lot of that's a lot of numbers in the forty one codes now, isn't there? I remember when I started at the society, we're up to somewhere around forty one dot six six, forty one dot six seven, somewhere around there. So we've had a few casks in the last five years. This one's called Horn of Plenty. That sounds fun. An eleven year old refill bourbon hoggy in the spicy and sweet profile. That one and G fourteen dot seven, a first fill X Moscatel Hogshead, thirty three year old single cask grain whiskey. It's a 33-year-old whiskey in an advent calendar. I don't know any other advent calendar in the world that has whiskey that, of that caliber in it. That's absurd. 42.6%. So also quite low proof for grain. Even, if, even grain at that, um, at that age generally is a, bit, is a bit higher proof. Normally it's sitting around 55. So it may have, been, may have been a little bit leaky. may have been just a nice gentle spirit, gentle maturation. We'll find out in due course. But I still have a bit of... Um, bit of dinner taste in my mouth so i've just finished dinner and uh it's i don't know if that will sit well so that, that low proof so i'm going to come back to that one i'm going to pop that one aside for the moment i do have 4.256 and 41.134 and i reckon the unpeated one the 41.134 might be the first one to go with so i'm going to pour that and morning from bonnie scotland folks mark westmoreland from wolfburn distillery mark we know you as the the daddy of our roundtable stream and we'd love to have you on of course the society stream as well great to see you mark hope you're well Mark Teague as well. Hope you're well as well. 
Always like to see the little whiskey glass from Mark Teague there. And Jesse Morgan says, uh, Slancha all had me envious of the Sydney event. Maybe consider re, uh, renouncing my ways as a Melbourne dweller. Jesse, hold on. Before I finish that, no, I'll finish it. it, it is it possible that SMWS shows some favoritism to certain states? Would be a good reason to consider moving there. <laughs> Jesse, uh, I'll tell you a funny joke, Jesse. I'll tell you. I'm just going to pour this whiskey and let it open up. This um, Advent Calendar 41.134 here. Uh, it's called Horn of Plenty, Spicy and Sweet Profile Refill Expert Hoggy Space Cider, 56.6%. Just what I needed. Jess, Jesse, just on that comment, we really try not to play favorites, obviously. We have great state managers in every state. Uh, we got some great photos out of Sydney, which why, why maybe it looked uh, like such a, a great time. And it was a great time. I'm going to show some of the photos in the, on this screen here uh, in just a moment. However, I just want to make it really clear uh, that especially between Sydney and Melbourne, you always get that whole sort of, um, what do you call it? It's like pe people in Melbourne, me Melbourne members will see Sydney events and go, oh, how come they get all the cool events? And then Sydney people see the events that we do in Melbourne uh, in years prior. Of course, this year has been a bit different, as you all know. Uh, but people in Melbourne will see, uh, sorry, people in Sydney see the Melbourne events that we do and go, hey, how come we didn't get that? So it's always it always works both ways. And um, I think our Melbourne members who have been members for more than a year or two will uh, attest to what 2019 looked like because we were doing one at least every month in Melbourne. Uh, there were whiskey lunches. There were paired dinners. There were boat cruises. There was um, garden tastings. We did all sorts of things like that in Melbourne in the last um, two years, which have been fantastic. This year, we just didn't weren't able to get a Melbourne event in in time because, A, the restrictions, you, you can't just suddenly go, well, the restrictions are over. Quick, let's put something on. People have to plan this kind of thing out. Uh, Sydney's been a little bit ahead of Melbourne in terms of uh, opening up, if you like, and venues being able to accommodate people. But we played it safe anyway by doing a garden tasting, and bam, the weather was fantastic. I'll show some photos in a moment. Um, and Alex Moore's the state manager for Melbourne, uh, for Victoria, I should say, uh, says Melbourne is going to go off next year. He is not wrong. There's a whole calendar of goodies being planned at the moment, which is all very exciting. Um, and oh, yeah, God, Robert. Hammer and nail on the head. Um, Melbourne has whiskey and almond, the best whiskey bar in Australia. I'm, not, I'm going to say it. They're so good. They love those guys, and they've been really punching above their weight this year. In a tough year, they've been doing all sorts of uh, their juice bags. They've been doing virtuals. I've done five virtuals with them this year now. Uh, it's been fantastic. Evening, everyone from James Turton. Good to see you, James. And it's just been. There's, there's obviously a lot going on there with. Um, with whiskey and almond so you know well done guys they know that they know we love them uh weekends please yes weekends please look most of our events are friday or saturdays um we have done some sunday afternoon tastings as well in melbourne uh but yeah most mostly on the weekends uh we know that weeknights aren't for everyone that's fine um but jesse i hope that clears up your question so whilst i'm letting that whiskey open up a bit in that glass and for those who have just joined, I've opened the next one in the advent calendar, 41.134, an 11-year-old spicy and sweet. That's a lovely nose on it. Very much befitting of the spicy and sweet moniker. Lovely. Okay. I'm going to let that open up, sit down for a bit. Um, I've got two other samples that I've missed out on. A 33-year-old. I can't believe there's a 33-year-old whiskey in an advent calendar. That's the second premium whiskey we've had in just two weeks. I don't, I'm looking forward to the next two weeks. Um a 33-year-old First Fill X Moscatel Hoggy there and a 15-year-old Orkney Goody Sherry Orkney as well. Two very um, rich whiskies there, but starting with something a bit lighter here. Um, yeah, James, James, you, you you weren't able to make it to the Christmas party. I realize that, but you can't wait to get to Melbourne and visit Whiskey and Almond again. Neither can I. That's extremely exciting. And um, uh, myself, Tom Roth, and John Buffard have created a mystery private advent calendar to share but I doubt even it has an age statement that old in it. There you go. And you know what? Big shout out to Tom Roff and John Buffard, two awesome members, uh, Tassie members, who I'm going to be catching up with you both, all three of you, I should say, um, uh, this weekend. I'll be in Tassie this weekend, which is fantastic, hosting the Sydney, uh, the Sydney, ugh, the Hobart Whiskey Bar Party with Tom. We've got catering. We've got uh, whiskey. We've got good times. We've got friends. We've got um, some people from the trade coming. It's going to be a really great afternoon in Parliament Gardens. Uh, tickets have sold out for that, um, but if you really want to come along and you've missed out, hit me up. We'll be able to work something out for you, I'm sure. Um, and Rob says, yes, Rob has flown to Sydney for an event before. In fact, Rob, uh, not to overplay that, but, or outplay it, or whatever the word is, 
Uh, I remember once I was doing event an event at Whiskey and Ailment um, in about 2017, 2016, 20, early 2016, mid, sorry, mid-2016. Fantastic event. And there was a, there was a young man there who, um, who said to me at the end of the, the formal presentation, he said, oh, this is my first time at Whiskey and Ailment. And I said, oh, welcome. This is a great bar. And he goes, yeah, I just wanted to come here for this event. And I said, oh, you're in town. I said, where are you from? And he said, I'm from Perth. I said, oh, you're in town for this event. He goes, yeah. I said, oh, you came over for work or something. And he said, no, no, no. I just flew over for this. Wow. I, I mean, Perth to Melbourne is quite a trek. And to do that, just to go to an event, uh, to hear me, of all people, <laughs> back in 2016 as well, uh, I think I've come a long way in terms of whiskey knowledge and presentation and everything since then. So I really don't judge my presentation on my um, old Archie Rose t-shirt tonight, but my overall presentation, if you know what I mean. Anyway, enough about that. Um. So I wanted to talk a little bit tonight, whilst I'm enjoying the stream, the topic was the difference between whiskey clubs and independent bottlers. Now, let me clear something up. We did not get an independent bottlers challenge award this year for 2020. Around this time, just before Christmas, when the awards are announced, is normally when we go, hey, look, we won independent bottler of the year again. And we've won it five times in the last seven years or something like that. Um, there's a good reason why we didn't win this year. We didn't enter. It's as simple as that. Now, I, I, first of all, I want to make a huge shout out to Alex Moores and Dark Valley, who picked up uh, Best Australian Independent Bottler, if I'm getting that terminology right. Um, so big shout out, Alex. Well done. Absolutely. Yourself and um, uh, old mate Tim Duckett also got a, um, a gold medal. And I can't think of what else was in that list. But um, I will say in years prior, we have done, we've had... Um, We've invented and we've won the Independent Bottlers Challenge, Independent Bottler of the Year. We would shout it from the rooftops. This is a really big deal from us. Uh, this year, we didn't win because we didn't enter. Now, there's two reasons for that. There's two reasons why I haven't entered. Every year, the IBCs, the, the Independent Bottlers Challenge, uh, would award us uh, would award us both the biggest award, but also lots of gold and double gold awards for the best bottlings, the best single casks. These are bottlings that we've had to submit to the competition uh, in years, in months, months before uh, the actual awards are announced. And so, once the awards are announced, those bottlings are long gone. Generally speaking, uh, there's not many many reasons for us to hold on to something in our warehouse. And so, uh, especially if it's not, you know, we do keep some archive. As you've seen, we've had events where we've had the dot ones and we've had things like that in the past. But the, you know, there's generally no reason for us to hold on to something which we think is going to win an award. Uh, we just, it's like, we've got great whiskey. Let's share it. Uh, so the, we, in this case of the of the IBCs, we just decided not to enter anything. It's as simple as that. And the second reason is we are a whiskey club. We're not just an independent bottler. And I want to really make that differential here for a minute. Just bear with me. So an independent bottler, generally speaking, and I'm talking about Scotch whiskey independent bottlers. It works a bit differently in other countries. Uh, but Scotch whiskey independent bottlers are generally... Uh, it's generally uh, bottlers who are independent bottlers who source whiskey through brokers, through third parties, through third party stock from other distilleries where a distillery might say, a distillery like Glen Morangie might say, hey, look at that. We've got 10 casks of Dal Ewan that we got in a trade and we don't have to do with them and they might not be very good, but do you want them? So that's, and that's where uh, third party stocks and often brokering stocks, brokerage, brokerage stocks, which is, uh, I hate to say it, but is often reject stock, is often sold on. Now, this might be stock that distilleries uh, haven't sold to blenders or blenders weren't offered it, but it's like, well, we'll give you a cheaper price on each cask, and therefore that's why you often see a lot of cheap, uh, independently bottled spirit. And you see things like, I'm going to use the same distillery, but like 10-year-old you know, Daluin or something like that that is clearly uh, not of a grade that the society would be interested in to, in the first place. And the second reason is because we have a direct relationship with a lot of these distilleries, more specifically the distillery owners, if you like. So if it's Diageo or Perno or something like that. But it's it's a case of where we're dealing with the, the quality of supply. And as I've said before, we're dealing with the filling of new make from these distilleries to our specification. So we want peated new make from this distillery into this cask and we'll, we'd like whatever it is, 2,000 litres a year. And that's then filled into casks and uh, we mature it at our warehouse. And that's where our warehouses, as you can see in this photo here, 
are filled with all, I'll just blow that photo up a bit, are filled with all sorts of interesting casks. Some have come from um, different places. We can see there in 1993. Oh, no, I've, what have I done there? Um, you can see there a 1993 uh, Kalila cask that probably doesn't have Kalila in it. It's just what the head is. It's just an old painted head. It's whatever that barcode is in the middle there. I'll try and zoom in on that so we can all see what's going on here. So you can see it's a old Kalila head, uh, barrel head there, but it's, oh, no, it does say Kalila on the, um, on the barcode as well. Well, there you go. I've zoomed in enough that I can see that. So that's an old uh, Kalila. We might see it at one point. Who knows? Um, I do know, however, this is you know, this is part of the SMWS warehouses here where we are filling these casks with spirit that we've sourced rather than going to brokers and going to and trying to be like, oh, we're, you know, how do we get this spirit? How do we get, you know, can we buy these casks? And they're sort of like, no, but you can have these rubbish ones that we haven't done anything with. That's I'm not I'm not um, I'm not chastising any independent bottler for that because they all operate differently. But we operate absolutely differently from the rest of the industry. We're at the core of it. We work with these distillers. We work with these distilling companies rather than at the periphery of it, rather than sort of scraping for what we can get. And that's really important. That's uh, something that really does actually change the whole fabric of the society in that this is not just independent bottlings anymore. This is a whiskey club and we do things differently. We absolutely do. It's utterly unique. And I don't even need to, need to make that sound like a a salesy way of putting it. It's not. It's it's absolutely just the truth of what the what we're doing and why the society is so different and how all these casks go through our expert tasting panel. And I've talked about the tasting panel before and our connections with the um, uh, SWRI words letters, the Scotch Whiskey Research Institute. I've talked about how what their role is here, how their their role is to further improve our tasting knowledge, our subjective analysis. Our, our identification of flaws and features in a whiskey. And that's really, that's the nerdy, gritty end of it that we don't have to worry about. All that means is as a member, you open your outturn, whether I do it, you know, physical outturn like that or uh, on your iPad or whatever, uh, you open your outturn and you can just pick on a flavor profile then. You can pick on a tasting note. You're not going to get something that is not good. You're going to get something that you might not like sometimes. That's, that's a matter of taste. That's a matter of your subjectivity coming into play. But there's not going to be any flaws. There's not going to be, well, let's hope not. That's the whole point. Um, <laughs> but you still got the ambassador award, right, says Rob Akers. Hey, 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 I'm still, you know what? Because there wasn't an Icons of Whiskey, I've got it up on the wall over here. That's what I'm looking at. Because there wasn't an Icons of Whiskey 2020, uh, I assume my 2019 ambassador of the year rolls over, right? That's how it works. Am I getting something wrong here? No, I've decided that's how it works. So going back to this photo, that's the warehousing there. And a lot of what we do at the society is, like I say, very different. There's a very dashing um, Ewan Campbell, our um, uh, head of whiskey stocks. Uh, he looks after the procurement and often the, um, the selection process for casks, for spirit. It's a very wide, encompassing role. He's a very busy man, but we appreciate everything we did. We do, sorry, with him. Um, I should also say, it's a, it was a while ago that I actually filmed with him. That was more than, uh, well, it's going to be almost two years ago. I sat down with you and, and we had a video chat together and we talked about whiskey. We talked about his journey in whiskey. It's a great video. You can catch that out, catch that, catch up with that. You can catch that video on our YouTube channel, SMWS Australia, of course. Um, carryover champ. That's right. Yeah, I'm the carryover champ, like Sale of the Century. Yeah, it's like if Sale of the Century you sort of stopped in, 86 and then returned in 2021 and someone who wanted in 1986 they're the carryover aren't they they'd have to be invited back surely so this is this is kind of the importance of what ewan's role is 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 selecting procuring and working on finding those great casks and um like i said he's he's a very busy man but we appreciate everything he does and of course a large part of our role now is selecting wood like these casks here like these sherry casks coming in from hareth uh there they are in all their glory and I'll show you this next photo. I love this photo. This is this is Kai and Ewan. You can spot them there in the middle, uh, flanked by two blokes. I don't know who the other two blokes are, but they're in a warehouse in Jerez, in Spain, inspecting casks that they'd like to be selecting and, and the process and the age and everything like that. It's a very, very uh, considered approach of selecting wood, a wood management policy that we're very proud of that IBs don't do. So does that make us no longer an independent bottler? One could argue so. So what's the point of 
entering into these independent bottling challenges if what we're doing is different from the rest of the scotch whiskey industry i want to make that clear i'm not um i'm absolutely in support of uh, other ibs um and like i said before massive congratulations to dark valley heartwood everyone who who got some awards in that um and elsewhere in the world of course as well american bottlers but uh it's it's not it's just a different model from what we do and i think that's really worth emphasizing um and I'll come back and I just want to show <laughs> what this one is. Here you go. This is what some of these, compared to some of the more grotesque distilleries in Scotland, that's what some of these um, uh, sherry houses look like in Hareth. Just absolutely stunning old architecture. But um, before I go on to the next the next point, um, a great comment here from Jesse Morgan. Speaking of the subjectivity, how likely is it that the tasting notes from the people uh, could be collated and perhaps given a section in our turn? Almost like a letter to the editor section, except with significantly less abuse and lofty opinions. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, Jesse, let's be honest. I meant much like letters to the editor, we'd probably just use asterisks where the abuse is. Um, but why not? You know what? That's a, that's a really cool idea. Um, I, we, it'd, but it'd need, be, it'd need to be whiskeys that the people, the members, um, have a chance to taste first. And Whiskey and Element can provide that in Melbourne. Um, they usually get the full out turn uh, ahead of every release, usually a week, of course, this year notwithstanding. Um, yeah, I like that idea. I like that idea. I'd like to see, even if they were tasting uh, whiskeys from previous out turns, just their tasting notes on it, just to see what they enjoyed about it and and um, almost like a vox pop, if you like. Of, uh, I mean, we sort of see that already with our, with our, with our fantastic Facebook group. You know what? It's a community. That's one of the other ma massive aspects I want to touch on in just a second, Jesse. So just uh, the next slide I had shown here was I wanted to show you some of the photos from our um, Sydney Christmas party, which was literally on Saturday. I've just had some of the photos taken off the camera um, just to show, and I've put a few up in our group as well on our, on our Facebook community. Um, there's Murray in his, uh, in his boater uh, pouring a bit of Last of the Summer Grime and Oily and Coastal 93. Delicious whiskey, that one. And uh, there's, of course, Andy Davis pouring some pouring some whiskey as well, uh, one of our wonderful hosts. And you can just make out uh, Derbage there in the back in the white. And like I said, it was just great to have so many members out enjoying the sunshine, enjoying a few drams, coming along for a ride with us and being part of what makes this an actual whiskey community. Sally, you'll hate me for showing that one, but I, I'm not sure she's watching right now. And and just seeing that some of the, the members coming out, we had about 85 members all up. Uh, coming out and enjoying a few drams along the way and coming out and, and just, like I say, being a part of the community that makes up uh, this wonderful whiskey club as we know it. That's one of the major benefits, of course, is the community aspect of joining. I don't need to hark on about that tonight, but it's it's really, it is, it's, it's obviously the partner bars, it's the experiences, it's the great whiskeys, it's the learning, it's this live stream, it's everything that we like to do for our members. But it really is, um, it really is a, a, a case of us um, creating this incredible sense of actually being a whiskey club rather than it being a mail order service or, you know, sort of, um, you know, bottle of the moment kind of things or, you know, you know, these, you know the ones like there's, there's wine clubs out there where all you ever hear from them is, um, you know, the, the monthly buy our wine email. And it's like, oh, what am I, what, what am I doing here? What is this? Anyway. I'm going to now taste this 41.134, Horn of Plenty. I love our spicy and sweet profile. One of my favorites. I mean, I could say that about any profile, really. It's all about mood. I've talked about a little bit this before. It's all about mood. It depends what you're in the mood for. And yes, uh, Dr. Akers, peak muzz. And of course, the muzz man, seeing the muzz man in his, um, in his, uh, his boater and his stripy jacket, he's the master of jackets. Um, he really uh, did dominate the jacket game that day. And he had stripy jacket with stripy tie, uh, a truly fashionable gentleman that he is. So, um, oh, it's and now it's finally actually opened up a bit. I always recommend everyone just go back to basics for a second. Give your whiskey some time in the glass. Give it time to just speak. Give it time to speak. If you pour, um, some people don't like that phrase neck pour, but it's almost like the first pour out of a bottle or the first pour into a glass. It can often be a bit sort of volatile. It can be a bit sort of wild. Um, give it a bit of time. It's a bit like a um, a complex porter or stout beer. Uh, once the temperature comes a bit, a bit closer to room temperature on them, uh, they they show so much more. And it's like a nice wine that's been decanted, 
any good spirit, any good wine, any good beer, I think appreciates generally just even just a few minutes, or in my case, 20 something minutes. <sighs> yeah. That's lovely. It's one of those distilleries that is a, I'll call it a workhorse distillery for, of which most of it goes into, I believe, the Johnny Walker stable. I don't know which Johnny Walkers. I'm sure some of it goes into red, some of it goes into blue and everything in between. It's a very, it's a very spicy malt often from Distillery 41. If that makes sense. It's very, um, uh, lots of, that's a like lo lovely tropical spice. Plenty going on in that nose, which makes sense. Horn of plenty. 56.6. I could, I'll be, I might be inclined to add water to that, but I won't. I, I'm, I don't think it needs it. I think it's one of those whiskeys that is zingy, but in a good way. And there's nothing wrong with, I mean, this is, <sighs> that sits just lovely. I'd be very, very satisfied with a full bottle of that, to be honest. It's one of those spirit characters that shines at this age. It's a wild, it's it's almost like wild yeast notes. Tropical malt. Like a banana milkshake. That's lovely. I'm going to let that sit even a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> give it time in the glass, enough time to take a picture and upload it to SMWS Australia. We always love photos in the group, guys. We love, guys and girls, we love photos in the group. We love them on Twitter. We love them on Instagram, wherever you want to tag us. Show us your journey. That's what being a member is all about. Show us your journey. Show us what you're opening. Show us what you're joining. Um, and show us what what um, what um you've just opened in your advent calendar, perhaps. And I'm really, uh, really digging this advent calendar. So I really appreciate you coming along this journey, talking a bit about why we didn't enter the IBCs this year, talking a bit about what makes a whiskey club at the very, very, the very basics and uh, talking about why it's important to um, to appreciate good whiskey and take time with it and share it with your fellow members and friends. In the meantime, I'm going to leave you for now. That's a nice little half hour uh, discussion for us tonight. Thank you so much for coming along this Monday live stream to have a chat about all good things. Uh, live stream will be back, I think, tomorrow night. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, I think I'm hosting uh, events both evenings for private bookings. And then uh, Friday, I'm in, in Tassie. So after tomorrow, they might be a bit sporadic, but you're going to see lots of Tassie footage and we'll get to chat with some amazing distillers and blenders and people who work in the trade there that run and make the, the Tasmanian whiskey trade as we know it today. And it's always changing. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And I will see you all. Uh, I'll see you all on the other side. See you tomorrow night. Sanjava. I'll, I'll end with some photos. I'll end with some photos.